Okay, let's go ahead for another game with Totally Spice rocking out the new Scovelin EX and also Shift Tree for the mini board reset. Basically, shuffling back up to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon if they have a full bench. If they have four Pokemon on their bench, you're shuffling back only one, but it's still a disruption of sorts. Um, in addition to our discards with Scovelin, two headed crushing. It's kind of an imitation of the old Licky Licky, if you guys are familiar with the card, I think it's from Sun and Moon. Licky Licky has an attack that allows you to discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon with triple acceleration. Uh, you get to satisfy the triple colorless attack cost. It's a stage one as well, you get to basically discard not just an energy from the active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon, but also a card from their hand and the top card of their deck, which is a lot stronger if you ask me. It does 90 base damage for one price card. It just feels a lot better than Scovelin to be honest, but I guess Scovelin EX has the HP advantage. You get to play the cape for it, you get to also uh, do extra damage as well. 140 is not bad um, for two grass. You don't need to play special energy for it. Um, if you run out of your triple acceleration, I guess Licky Licky is in trouble. I don't think you can shuffle back. I forgot if special charge is in... I'm pretty sure it wasn't, right? I don't think you can shuffle back your special energies back in Sun and Moon. I forgot. I, I'm not really a big fan of TCG back in Sun and Moon. I played intensively during the Sword and Shield era. Um, three quarters of the way through to near to the end of Sun and Moon. I think that's when I started posting videos and then I started getting good at the game, uh, you know, mid midway to Sword and Shield and started, you know, getting frustrated with the game close to the end of Sword and Shield and now Scarlet and Violet and getting more, I'm adjusting myself better. Um, you know, experimenting with different cards. I'm having more fun with experimentation, to be honest. Um, because it doesn't, the latter as well is a huge improvement. It, it's not as intense, it's not as crazy as the last season. As, you know, all of the previous seasons, they are pretty crazy. Like, meta decks everywhere. Now you still got meta decks, but they are, they are less intensive, right? If you lose the game, it's not a big deal. You still get to match up with strong players. Whereas last time, if you lose the game multiple times, they keep matching you up against terrible, terrible beginners who just doesn't know what to do, who is just not even doing anything, playing like 10 different energies in the same deck. I don't even know. Like you have, you're forced to, it's almost like hazing. You're forced to play 10 games against crazy beginners just to rank up so that you get to play against strong players again. And then if you lose again, they, are, they force you to play against beginners all over again. It's just really, really frustrating. And it kind of beats you down, um, you know, from the multiple failures of experimentation. Failure is to be expected when you are building a new deck and you have to go through multiple, many, many, many failures. You have no idea how many failures I've gone through to build all of my decks. Every single deck that I built, I have to go through so many losses. And especially, you know, all of the last seasons, it's not it's not great because after losing a couple games, one or two games even, they force you to play against 10 matches against beginners. 10 matches! Like, I'm not kidding. It's so frustrating that I just... I, I started just conceding the game over and over. I just gave up completely at some point. And it takes a few days to come back to the game. Because everyone is way too competitive and they can't stop playing meta decks. Everyone just keeps on playing not just meta decks, the most consistent, the most well-built, the most well-rounded meta deck that's completely bulletproof. I mean, it's just totally unfair that they have so much time to upgrade and refine the deck list of the same card. Charizard EX Pidgeot, Charizard EX Pidgeot. They got so much time to polish the consistency of the same deck, which is just not really fair. Like, they keep playing the same thing while I'm here trying to build different decks every single day. Do you know how hard that is? It is ridiculously stressful when you keep losing against the same bloody deck. It just drains your entire soul. I just have to say that, I'm sorry, I know I'm ranting, but I'm just trying to share my experience with you guys of the deck building process. It is not easy, and as I said, you have to go through multiple failures in order to get 
are the deck that you can be proud of to call your own in order to have a deck that stand a chance against the standard meta. Standard is not easy. Standard meta? Even worse. You better make sure that your deck is consistent and has the grit to face off against an Ancient Box, to face off against Iron Hands, Charizard EX, Chen Pao, Goldango, and I just realized the other day Goldango EX has a huge upgrade, which is Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. How crazy broken is that? I guess you do still have to discard two cards with your Superior Energy Retrieval, and that means if you do search for any two cards, you are basically cutting your hand down to zero cards on the next turn. But still, if you play some other supporter cards in addition to the Cypher Maniac, eventually you get to basically discard up to eight or even nine energy from your hand for a brutal OHKO against anything, even if they have like, you know, damage reduction with HP buffs, Hero Escape. If they have 500 HP, for example, with a Wigglytuff and Hero Escape, you still get to do the OHKO? That's ridiculous, man. That's just... I don't even know what to say. But anyways, let's just get back into the game. I think that's enough rambling for today's video. Um, so we finally get to play Roxanne. They actually did a boss or Prime Catcher, I can't remember. I think it's a boss on our Mew EX on the bench. And we actually get to play Roxanne early for this game, which is... Super fun because now we're cutting their hand. They got no draw support in play as you can see. And we're cutting their hand down to two cards remaining before playing our two-headed crushing for the extra discard. Not just discarding one card from their hand, which is a big deal because we just played Roxanne, but also a the top card of their deck. So if they have something important like Sada's Vitality, that would be a big score. We actually discarded two supporter cards with that one attack. So now they've got not enough energies to attack on the next turn. And they can't even play the Dark Patch because they need to attack in the active right now. Uh, they got no free retreat option. What's going to happen? Are they going to get another Sada though? That would be depressing. Okay, they got the Darkness. What's that one card in their hand? Is it a Research? Is it a Sada? No, it's not a Sada. We got another KO. They should have benched it. They should have kept it at a bench. Because now we got another free 2 prize from the Weakness uh, Knockout. Which is a big deal. It's a big advantage. I don't know why we're not getting our Mew and Scovet. <laughs> I think this is the middle. We're in the middle of building up the consistency of this list. Eventually, we added like a couple more Puffins and Nest Ball. We had, in the end, we had four Nest Ball and three Buddy Puffins. So setting up a bench late is no longer an issue for this list. We have optimized it and it's working fine now. But thank you for joining us today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. Have a great day and bye for the people. Enjoy life.